Good afternoon, friends. I'm super excited to be here with you today. Um, unfortunately, under the circumstances of the story that we are going to talk about. Um, but before we get into that, I want to thank you all so much for all of your support. I have so many of you coming from my main account, joining me here on the true crime journey. And I just want to send out my love to all of you. As you know, I have been going through a lot and I really just appreciate all of you for every bit of support and love and check-ins that you do with me daily. I appreciate you more than you know and I hope that you enjoy this next experience with us. So let's go ahead and jump right into the story. This, my friends, is my wonderful friend Sheridan Tom who was born on April 10th, 1990. He was a very loving individual. He would give you the shirt off of his back. <clears throat> he didn't know a stranger. He wore his heart on his sleeve. He was an incredible human being and he never knew a stranger. He made sure that if you were at that party, you were getting a hug from him. He was such a loving and inspiring person. As I stated previously, Sheridan was such a loving person and it's because of his mom, Christy. Christy was best friends with my aunt, which is the main reason that I even got the opportunity and blessing to be a part of this family. I love this family still to this day. I keep in contact with them and Sheridan learned everything because of Christy. Sheridan loved his family and even with the struggles that he went through throughout his life with addiction, he was always there and was always a very comforting, gentle soul that wished nobody harm and would do anything to make sure that peace was kept between all parties. On April 18th, 2022, Sheridan was murdered while meeting somebody and... When the facts started coming out, this is where the media kind of twisted the narrative a little bit. As I stated, Sheridan was an addict and he was in his recovery and he was in the prime of his recovery. He was doing amazing. He had found God. He was doing his steps and helping others. He was beginning to sponsor. He was really on the road, the right road and was doing everything he could to stay on that correct road. In his addiction life, he also picked up amazing traits within music. He was an amazing bass guitar player, and he always had this vision of being a rock star and really moving forward with that, and he fueled it into his passion for playing. And he was an incredible guitar player. He played in a couple of bands. He played with friends. He was always the light of the party. In the previous slide, as I stated, he, yes, was an addict, but again, he was more than that. And he was a rock and roll fanatic. He was a fantastic person who wouldn't have hurt a soul, who again, made sure that everybody felt loved and appreciated, and was just a good human being. Sheridan was working with the Progress House on his addiction and living a straight path from here on out. Below is pictured with him his sister Raven, who is again one of his biggest supporters, and eventually became his voice once the tragedy struck on April 18th. Progress House also dedicated a brick to Sheridan in his memorial. It's hard to consider how murder happens to anybody, but it was very, very hard to understand how it happened to Sheridan. As I stated earlier, Sheridan was taken from us on April 18th, 2022, over $160 by three separate individuals. These individuals are 23-year-old Noah Edwards, 22-year-old Emily Kilgore, and a suspect who is a 17-year-old male who is not released because it is a minor. As I stated previously, this is where the media twists the narrative a little bit. They stated, based on Kilgore's story, that Kilgore and Sheridan were meeting up for a deal and 
She decided not to go through with it. At this point, the other two suspects bombarded, robbed, and then shot Sheridan in the back. The miner who pulled the trigger stated that he thought he was pulling something out, which wouldn't have happened again with Sheridan, as he was a gentle soul and would not hurt anybody. And that is why he pulled the trigger. Beyond the twist on what the media reported, another big calamity happened. Murder suspect now back in custody after the Marion County Sheriff's Office says he was accidentally released. The Sheriff's Office admits procedures were not followed. This is the second inmate charged with a violent crime released in error in the last five weeks. Fox 59's Courtney Crown worked all day to track down answers. Noah Edwards spent 11 hours on the run after a clerical error at the Marion County Jail led to his release. It was mid-April when a clerical error by the Marion County Prosecutor's Office led to the wrongful release of a serial robbery suspect. Now, elected leaders controlling the budgets of these two agencies have questions. Thursday evening, the Marion County Sheriff's Office reports murder suspect Noah Edwards was mistakenly released from the jail. They say the inmate who should have been released was Nor Edwards. A public information officer says while it's obvious proper procedures were not followed, an investigation is ongoing to determine the cause of release. Edwards is charged with murder and robbery in the death of Sheridan Tom on April 18th. While Tom's family was not available for an interview today, his sister says the idea of, quote, those monsters stepping foot outside of the jail gives us the worst feeling imaginable because we would hate for anyone else's loved one to be harmed in the same way my brother was. Three people are charged in this case, including Edwards. Shortly after Tom's death, her sister spoke with us about her family's loss. He has to miss out on getting married someday, having kids, being an uncle because of somebody else's selfishness. On April 13th, Lance McGee was arrested for his role in a series of armed robberies in Marion County. He too was wrongfully released from the jail due to a clerical error, this time at the fault of the prosecutor's office. Now City County Council Minority Leader Brian Mowry wants to know what's going on. For the folks that really need to be back there, uh, it's alarming to know that they're getting out and released on clerical or mistakes. The council approves the budgets for the sheriff's office and the prosecutor's office. Mowry says Sheriff Carry forth. As Noah Edwards was re-arrested and brought back into custody, it, it still happened and it shouldn't have happened. Today I want to remember my friend for the amazing individual that he was, for the loving and accepting and appreciative gentle soul that he was, not the three monsters that took his life away from everybody who loved and cared about him. He was an amazing, amazing individual, and he deserved so much more. He deserved to live the way that all of us get to now. He had so much going for him. He was on the right path, and that is what I want to remember Sheridan for. Not for his past, not for the media twist, but for the amazing person that he was.